What's up everyone? I'm your female otaku and I'm here to review episode 7 of Sakura Quest. And with this episode, we find out that Riri was the stand-in for Maki. Because you know how uh, the part was originally going to be given to Maki, but Maki turned it down. So instead, Riri stepped up to the plate and I was so surprised. Like, Riri? Acting? Really? <laughs> that really took me back, huh? Well, she stepped in, but didn't really do so well. As to be expected from an amateur, and especially a Dondere like herself, they're not exactly known for their acting skills, okay? But, you know, Maki, she was heading back, decided to take the part, but then she stopped herself and was just still like, you know what? If I stop Riri right now, then she'll never want to perform in front of people again. So she let Riri finish, but Maki did give some advice to her, and that was really cool of her to do. And later on, you know, well, throughout the episode actually, Maki is just thinking about how she feels about acting, if she just likes it, or if it's her passion and she wants to continue to pursue it. And you know what? Her family really wants her to go on with her acting career. They believe in her. Her father even helped her out, even though her and her dad don't have the best of relationships at the moment. He still helped her out by getting her a bunch of extras for the film. And you know, her brother is always there to help her out as well. Heck, even the dad even gave Maki a tape to remind her how great of an actress she is or how she's been interested in acting ever since she was little and that only her father could look at her like that that's so sweet that is so incredibly sweet the father was just supposed to film the entire school play but instead all the focus was on his daughter that's so cute oh meanwhile with shiori we find out that yes the house did belong to someone who died which we all pretty much knew i even said it last week but what I didn't know is that it was someone completely unrelated to Shiori. This wasn't Shiori's grandmother or some aunt or any other relative who lived in that house. No, this belonged to a, just a really kind old lady. And the old lady told Shiori stories and even took her measurements and stuff. And that that's pretty much something that like my family would do. So I can see why Shiori is so attached to this house and you know the old lady and stuff because she's practically that old lady was practically like a family member and yes it is true that the owners of that house did say that it was okay to burn it down but she really just didn't want it to go she took it upon herself to say like to tell a lie saying that she couldn't get in contact with them when really it was all okay so that was a little disappointing in Shiori. I understand why she did that, but she has no rights to the house whatsoever. And if the owners say it's all right, then it's all right. And then Yoshi tells Shiori that Shiori doesn't care about all the other houses getting burnt down, even though they probably have precious memories and stuff. And I'm just like, well, girl, that's a little bit rude of you. And so they had a little bit of an argument, but you know, it was all good in the end. Shiori let go of the house. And I gotta say, that must be very depressing watching a house you hold dear to you burn right in front of your eyes. Oh yeah, so the house, it did burn down. They actually went through with it. But once again, the director decided to change some things, this time having the lead actress jump into the fire with her zombie love. But it was pretty dangerous, you know? And even though the actress was willing to do so, Maki, she decided to take over because, you know, the actress's agency was a little uh, sketchy on this. They were just like, eh, it's really dangerous. I don't really think you should do that. I mean, I know it's great. You want to do this, but we don't want you to do this. So Maki decides to step in and she goes through with it. So it's really awesome to see that she is willing to take chances now and she's going to continue to pursue her acting career. And even though, you know, she's working on with the tourism bureau and stuff, I'm sure like later on down the road, she will continue to look for more opportunities for acting and that's awesome. You know, that's what I expect with uh, all of these girls. I don't expect all of them to work in the tourism board for very long. Like same with Sanai. Sanai will most likely eventually find something along the lines of maybe like social media manager or something that involves like, you know, making websites or something like that, like a website designer. Like Sanai will probably find a job in that sort of field. Really not too sure exactly what she wants to do just yet, but you know she's got plenty of time. She young. Yoshi, she may stay in Monoyama. Not too sure about that. I mean, she is liking Monoyama right now and she likes helping them out, but this is only for a year so far, so I don't know if she wants to renew this or not, but we'll have to see. Shiori, 
what does she want to do? Okay, you know what? Scratch that. I really only know that Maki and Sanai will probably find other jobs and won't really stick with the tourism board. A few other things before I end this review. One, I love that English song that played during this one montage when Maki was just walking around her neighborhood and looking at or really like reminiscing about her past self, her younger self, waiting for new opportunities for acting and practicing acting. Like that song was fantastic. I need that on my phone. And the other thing that really caught my eye was when the little kids were being so bratty to Sanae. The one freaking kid, oh my lord, the one kid actually goes up to Sanae, smacks her booty, and then all the kids make fun of her for having a big butt. And I'm just like, is this really happening? I mean, that stuff does happen in real life. Heck, that's even happened to me back when I worked over at a summer camp two years ago. I know that feeling. It fucking sucks, man. But Jesus, I, I've never seen anything like that in anime before. I mean, obviously I've seen bratty kids in anime, but nothing like that. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just so shocked because it's happened to me before. Like, what the fuck? And that was this episode. So let me know your thoughts on it. Were you disappointed that Sandal Coon wasn't in this episode? I know I was. <laughs> Sandal Coon actually mentioned it at the end of with the, the, the preview. He actually mentioned it and I'm just like, I missed you Sandal Coon, where were you? Oh man, it's not the same without Sandal Coon. But I really enjoyed this episode. So again, let me know your thoughts and catch you later as I review Buso Shoujo. I'm your female Otaku, Sayonara.